I want to go back to Cloud Foundry. Initially, there are some big players who invested in this community, in this technology, but like VMware is a good example, acquisition happened, and then the market is totally because of broadband acquisition, license changing, prices changing. So folks have started to look at alternatives. What impact it has on Cloud Foundry, the foundation and the Cloud Foundry ecosystem. And if there are folks who are looking elsewhere, can any and help them? And if yes, how? Well, it has always been a strong business case you know, in our organization to be an alternative to some of the larger commercial vendors. And I think it's healthy for an ecosystem to have those alternatives because if it's quite normal that, you know, just from pure statistics, if, if you're working with a lot of organizations, some customers will get upset sometimes and want to move on. And an ecosystem needs to provide alternatives, you know, and that's healthy for the ecosystem because it keeps people in a certain technology. So for Cloud Foundry, there is still today organizations like us who, who can, you know, manage large scale Cloud Foundry environments and, you know, be an alternative to anything, you know, that, I don't know, some, it's time to change for. But at a greater scale, it's not only about Cloud Foundry and there having opportunity to change vendors. Is If you look at infrastructures, it's the same. Like you will often see that the customer is enthusiastically buying into a particular vendor and then over time they are, I don't know, have negotiations with them and at some point they find, hmm, we don't, we don't feel that we are being treated in a fair way. So in, in general, like if, if you're building cars, would you have one single vendor uh, for a critical resource? Or would you rather have multiple sources and being able to have a negotiation power? You can, you can also look at it from a different perspective, like now with politics going on and, and tariffs being opposed. What happens if, for example, you got a tariff on digital products, you're on U.S. infrastructure, and your cost for IT raises, rises by 20%? So you need to mitigate risk. Uh, risk as an organization, also in consuming digital services and products. So it's always about mitigating a healthy relationship of your workloads to the underlying products, which usually means you should buy into vendor-neutral APIs in the sense that you buy into open source standards, open source products, first and foremost, before committing to vendor-specific proprietary APIs. And then you need an ecosystem that's healthy enough to provide you with alternatives. So for Cloud Foundry, and going back to your question, for Cloud Foundry customers, this means the following. We see organizations that are committed and remain committed to Cloud Foundry. They find alternatives if they want to change their vendors. So it's healthy for them. No need to move away. However, you will also see that there's a dynamic that Within organizations, the demand for Kubernetes is also there and rises. So these organizations, they will have to have both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. And then you come back to how would you make those systems coexist? How would you do the migration, you know, from one to the other? Or, you know, just let the developers choose. And our contribution with Clutch is to make, for example, a data service installation where you get on-demand databases that you can use in both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes with the same level of convenience across, across both on-premise and public infrastructures. So you get all of this together. You have the vendor-neutral API, which is Cloud Foundry. You have data services that are based on open standards, the Open Service Broker API. You tie into, on the application level, open source databases. A Postgres is a Postgres, right? And then you have the infrastructure independence, which means you can shift with an entire platform from, let's say, one infrastructure to another. May this be AWS to Azure or the other way around. May this be vSphere to OpenStack or I don't know whether this is probable, OpenStack to vSphere. 